Hello friends, good afternoon. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis. Today is 1st of June 2018. Myself, Sagabi Ashwat, I am a tutor at Siksha S Academy and I teach psychology, Indian economy and ethics here. So the good for the day, it is more pertinent as the exam approaches. As the exam closes in, you have to stay away from negative people. They have a problem for every solution. Right, that's what this great man has said. Okay, on that positive note, uh, we'll be heading towards the in the news analysis. Right, so what do we have in store today? Uh, the first page, uh, you know, the, uh, the first article or the first you know, topic VJP loses Kairon Island seat and the first reverses in SMP polls. Uh, this is completely political in nature. How uh, the ruling party has been dropped uh, uh, at various places. Right, no need to go through this. And down what's the fiscal year, right, financial year 18, right, 2018 grew that 6.7%. And uh, the GDP estimate for uh, fiscal 2018 17 18 was at 6.6. .6. However, the quarter four GDP expansion accelerated to 7.7 .7, and this was mostly led by your manufacturing sector and the construction sectors. This has led to the upward revision of the GDP growth of the full year that is 2017-18. These are, remember, these are uh, revised estimates. So, a full year 2017-18 growth rate at 6.7%, right? So earlier, uh, you know, the idea was that it would be reaching only 6.6%. Now it has been, uh, you know, increased to 6.7%, uh, right? So apart from this, uh, there was a turnaround, uh, you know, uh, this seems to be a turnaround of the economy and uh, should give a boost uh, uh, to the economy going forward, right? And uh, even the uh, manufacturing has picked up in the quarter three and quarter four of last year, right? Uh, which suggests that uh, the impact of the GST is quite behind us. Also, there is uh, this apart from your, uh, you know, manufacturing and construction sectors, the capital formation is another area where the growth has been rather strong, right? And uh, moreover, uh, you know, the official has said that. Uh, most of this growth was contributed to by your domestic sector rather than external growth itself. Why? Because when you look at the net export growth in all the four quarters, it remained negative. So the growth we have seen must have come from, you know, must have come from your, uh, you know, domestic sector itself. When you compare it year on year, what can be seen as the fiscal year 17 had a growth rate of 7.1 overall, uh, but now it has dropped to 6.7 percent for various reasons, right? It's for various reasons, including uh, your uh, rolling out of GST, right? The demonetization effect, right? So these were all the reasons. Who, uh, apart from that, uh, you also had the uh, you know oil prices going up. So there were several reasons why the growth rate has fallen as compared to 2016-17, right? Next. No bids for Air India stake sale, uh, says the government. So the deadline ended uh, uh, day before yesterday, or uh, yeah, it, was, uh, it ended yesterday evening, and uh, the government uh, was making an all-out effort to prioritize Air India, which was uh, quite a loss-making you know, a venture for the government. So <coughs> now this effort has come to an abrupt halt where uh, zero bits uh, have come from potential players, right? So the, uh, there was a, a, yesterday was the last day for expression of interest uh, in the national carrier. If they wanted to buy it, they had to bid and no one had come, uh, has come forward and uh, has done the bidding right so what is the problem uh, here uh, probably the you know seller that is the government has uh, too many strictures when it comes to selling of air india probably and uh, 
you know, the government of India proposes to sell 76% of uh, Air India along with the low-cost subsidiary Air India Express and a 50% stake in AISATS, a ground handling joint venture with Singapore Airport Terminal Services. So, all these put together, it will be sold as a single entity. However, the new owner will have to take a debt burden of around 33,000 392 crore rupees while the government will set up a you know special purpose vehicle will which will take up around 25000 uh, you know crore rupees of debt so you know given that you know there are these strictures where it will be selling 76% along with uh, you know the subsidiaries and uh, you know stake in AI Sats as well as uh, 33000 crore rupees of losses are to be taken up uh, by the you know bidder or so as to say uh, the winner of the bids so these are the strictures and for that reason probably uh, none of the you know uh, potential bidders have come forward and uh, uh, played a role so the current bid process cannot proceed and uh, uh, you know it will have to take call the government would have to take the call on the future course of action uh, probably there would be a rethink on uh, the terms of the bidding, right? Obviously, the recent architecture, this is the recent architecture has not worked. Okay, next, so this is something which is said by the former finance minister and need not go into it. And nothing from the first page, nothing from the second, nothing from the third. Advertisements everywhere and nothing from the fifth, I guess. No, nothing. And from the sixth, you have nothing. Seventh, you have a sharp drop in tobacco smoking in India, says WHO reporter. This is, uh, this is something uh, which is a good thing for India, and uh, it's. Uh, if uh, if possible, you should uh, remember a few numbers from here as well. So. It was 19.4 percent prevalence of uh, the smoking tobacco, to, smoking of tobacco uh, in 2000, and it has dropped to 11.5 percent in 2005, according to WHO, and that's a sharp drop. So the report also projects that uh, the drop would be further down to, you know, 9.8 in 2020 and uh, 8.5 by 2025 i think it is 2015 rather than 2005 right probably it is a, a print error right it would be 2015 if i'm not wrong right so generally the prevalence of tobacco use uh, decreases more slowly right in now uh, uh, low and middle income countries uh, because uh, you know they will have the tobacco industry generally has a very strong and uh, relentless uh, you know lobbying uh, 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 relentless lobbying uh, which will force the governments to uh, not enforce you know proper control policies on your uh, tobacco products so for that reason generally your prevalence of tobacco will be more uh, tobacco use will be more in the low and middle income countries so while this report uh, given by the WHO covers you know tobacco usage in the form of smoking India has a large chunk of its population uh, which uses tobacco chewing right it is an additional burden so this report does not cover tobacco chewing so for us it, it is not something to rejoice over the report findings uh, Yes, it's a good thing, but it's not something we have to rejoice over. Why? Because you know the major problem for us is tobacco chewing. And uh, going further, uh, you know the government has to take steps to curb, right, or to put restrictions on tobacco chewing as well, right. Uh, most people uh, know that tobacco causes cancer and lung disease, but many of them are not aware that uh, it causes heart disease and stroke as well, that is cardiovascular disease as well. So spreading awareness is something which would be important, right, uh, at a national scale, okay. So here are some facts 
Uh, I don't think you need to take down these bags. These are um, just some numbers, random numbers, uh, after doing some service. Uh, I think uh, it would be difficult for you to remember most of this stuff. But remember this, right? Uh, the major concern for India is chewing tobacco, uh, as of now. And uh, smoking tobacco has been reduced over the years and it will see a further decline. But the prevalence of you now see this more than three four tobacco users have it in the chewing form so that's the major issue right next nothing from this page here what will the caretaker take care of this is about our, the politics of uh, pakistan how things are going in pakistan uh, I would not uh, ask you to tell deeper into this entire uh, political, you know, uh, game that's going on in Pakistan. Uh, obviously, the tenure would end in the month of July, and obviously, how things go on then, uh, we have to look into it. It's like a running commentary when it comes to international affairs. Uh, so, yes, you have to give a reading to this, right? Just give it a reading. Uh, but there would be nothing to take note of uh, why because that would only be a running commentary things keep on changing and these things cannot be included in your answers why because you have to be very precise while writing the answers per se okay polls and polarization now this is uh, about uh, the elections uh, assembly elections which were held recently as well as your uh, looks about by elections so nothing to look into that for and then you have us guarding the peace uh, this is about uh, you know Argentina the president Marcy right he has some reformist credentials in fact a decade ago he brought in some reforms and uh, uh, his reformist credentials are online on the line as Argentina faces some economic crisis as of now so what is this all about so, as of now, what's happening is uh, the US dollar is getting strengthened, right? All across the world, it is as against all the other currencies, US dollar is getting strengthened. And uh, this is happening because the US Federal Reserve is raising the interest rates and investments are getting attracted to the US. Uh, you know, uh, Argentina is not immune from this. So, uh, what happens when the US dollar strengthens, uh, the capital flies from other countries towards US and uh, other currencies become weaker. Uh, Argentinian currency, that is the piece, is no uh, exception to that. But uh, with the history of uh, recurrent defaults and devaluation of the piece, uh, your Argentina has a greater cause for concern as of now. So, <coughs> This President Marcy, right, uh, who has a market friendly face, ensured that you know Argentina would return to a global capital market in 2016 after a decade, right, after almost a decade. Uh, now he has a special stake in ensuring that his reforms remain on track. So, following uh, a record in debt issue uh, uh, that year, uh, Argentina became uh, the second Latin American country uh, f after Mexico to launch this 100 year maturity bond in 2017. So they have launched the bonds, and uh, the interest rates as of now are, uh, you know, being increased. So, why is uh, Mr. Marcy doing this? Because your currency is weakening, the way to attract, you know, uh, a more foreign currency also is to say you know more investments to your country is by shoring up your currency the way to do it is increase the interest rate right so uh, that's what uh, a 40 percent increase has been done in the key interest rates so as to shore it up right uh, this is going to cause problems for you know uh, Argentina where because when you increase the interest rates uh, it becomes uh, difficult for the private sector to you know take loans and invest 
or domestically so that would be problematic uh, nonetheless it attracts your what uh, it attracts your uh, foreign investment so uh, it's not like uh, you know it has had the uh, it has not had the taste of uh, such things the most recent crisis in Latin America's third largest economy, that is 2001-2002, default to the tune of $95 billion, is the largest in the world, you know, uh, had unleashed hyperinflation, social unrest and political instability in this uh, very country, right? Uh, and uh, this is in context of uh, Argentina running towards IMF for a multi million multi billion dollar loan now, right? So when there was this, you know, ninety five billion dollar default, uh, the socialist president was there, uh, Kirchner. Uh, he took an aggressive stand uh, stance against uh, the investors, and the country was effectively closed from the global money markets. But uh, after that, uh, you know, Marcy came in and uh, he brought in some gradual reforms and uh, you know he was dubbed uh, as more of a neo-Keynesian rather than a neoliberal right <clears throat> so now the f problem is that uh, you know you had to go for fiscal tightening as well in Argentina right uh, and uh, Mr. Masi has been uh, prudent to promise continuity with his cautious approach to regularize subsidies, like legislative tax and pension reforms. So the era of economic profligacy, that is spending too much that was uh, propped up by the commodities boom in the last decade is probably over for Argentina now. At the same time, no price is too high to avert a repeat of horrors of the social upheavals of uh, more recent years. Right, so occupying a centralist platform, Mr. Masi, however, uh, is better placed than any other politician in that country to negotiate a path ahead to balance the conflict of interests, right? Conflicting interests, right? So uh, you need not read much into it, uh, you know, just understand how interest rates and uh, your exchange rates are linked to one another, okay? And uh, Argentina is in some economic crisis, that's about it. Settling disputes out of court. Uh, this is a, a, one more important, uh, you know, article you need to go through. So there was this amendment brought, right? Uh, you know, uh, a piece of legislation on that an amendment was brought. Uh, that is your commercial courts, commercial division, and commercial appellate division of high courts amendment ordinance 2018. So this amends the Commercial Courts Act of 2015 and uh, this makes um, uh, pre-litigation mediation mandatory, right? In case of commercial disputes, pre-litigation mediation will be made mandatory in commercial disputes. Bro. So that's what will be done with this, you know, uh, amendment. So it is expected that uh, all the parties, uh, you know, all the parties uh, have a sense of uh, show a sense of responsibility in resolving disputes. Um, it puts the ball in the court of the parties involved rather than looking at external agencies like courts and uh, urges them to engage with uh, one another to resolve the disputes. So, what is this uh, meaning of mediation? See, the ordinance makes it compulsory that no suits concerning commercial disputes will be filed under the act unless the person filing the suit exhausts the remedy of pre-litigation mediation that is it is made mandatory however if there is an urgency right if it is an uh, urgency to resolve the dispute then an interim relief if it is required so this pre-litigation mediation can be dispensed with. You can skip that part. However, in all other cases, it would be mandatory, right? And uh, it has to be conducted within a period of three months, extendable by two months. So any settlement that is arrived by mediation will have the status of arbitral award on a agreed terms and uh, will be enforceable like a decree of the court. 
Uh, importantly, the time limits for filing the cases will pause uh, during the time of pre-litigation mediation, right? So what is this mediation process? Uh, it's a, a way of resolution of disputes by the parties, uh, uh, you know, which involves discussion of the conflicts. Uh, there will be no allegations and counter allegations here and uh, assessments will be made uh, where the interests lie uh, in resolving the entire dispute. So option for settlement are explored and uh, settlement is worked out through joint evaluation. The process, the entire process is managed by a neutral person called the mediator and uh, may evaluate the disputes and weigh in on options uh, for the settlement but that mediator has no authority to impose a settlement so that mediator cannot impose it. Right? The participation of the disputants is voluntary. The terms of settlement if the parties do not settle are decided by the parties right the discussions are confidential so this is all that it talks about uh, did we have such uh, uh, you know mediation earlier uh, it's not something new in india it was already there there was an act called arbitration and conciliation act of 1996 uh, which made uh, the settlement arrived through conciliation enforceable like a court decree itself uh, even under your uh, Code of Civil Procedure, judges can refer the cases to mediation. Uh, under your micro, and, uh, you know, micro, small, and medium enterprises development act, uh, it also mandates conciliation when the disputes arise uh, on the payments of MSA, MSMEs. <coughs> um, however, this entire ordinance has some problem. This entire, you know, uh, amendment has some problem so what is that problem so one of the advantages of uh, mediation is that it is voluntary in nature how does this reconcile with the mandatory part right there is this mandatory nature so one, on one side it says voluntary on the other side it says you know uh, mandatory so will a pre-existing mediation agreement be enforced that is also a question wide open Right, if there is a pre mediation agreement, will that be enforced as well? And thirdly, what will be the status of the cross border mediation? Right, that's also not covered under the new ordinance. Uh, we can uh, get some inputs from the Italian, uh, you know, example and the UK example. You just read through it. The Italian case or the Italian, you know, model is that the mediation is based on incentivizing right whereas in case of uh, you know UK the mediation policy has been to impose a cost on disputants who are not ready to mediate in this case those who mediate and settle they will be incentivized in the Italian case right so we have to borrow from this and uh, we have to you know bring in some changes to the ordinance also uh, it is important that there are different types of cases when it comes to disputes, right? So certain disputes are better left out of uh, the mediation route. For example, uh, you know, uh, there will be some disputes uh, which are related to maintaining the status quo or uh, restraint orders, right? In such cases, mediation would not be possible. Why? Because the only way forward would be to go to the courts and arbitrate, right? So such cases ought to be left out. So that is something uh, which uh, should be done in the refining of this entire ordinance. Okay. Next, as the Modi government delivered, uh, that's something which is again uh, like a political rhetoric which goes on. No need to look into it. And then oh, nothing here. Nothing from this page as well. And then nothing here. Here, US renames specific command, right? It is renaming its specific command as Indo Pacific Command. Uh, this marks an important shift uh, in the sense of for a period now, US has been calling uh, the Pacific Command as Indo Pacific Command, right? It is referring to the region as 
you know, Indo-Pacific region rather than Asia-Pacific region. So, what does this mean? This means that, uh, you know, public, it, it means, or it is a public expression of America's keenness to count India as a key partner in its strategic uh, planning, right? That's what it means. So, uh, it shows greater connectedness, right? Greater connectedness of the two regions. And uh, also, it shows how US is, uh, you know, putting India, pitting India against China in Asia, right? And uh, it considers India to be a major partner when it comes to the, you know, Asian area. That is why, you know, it is naming the entire region as Indo-Pacific region. So that's about it. It is all about con comments made by various other, uh, you know, various other officials and uh, admirals there. Right, next we have nothing here, nothing here as well, nothing here, yeah, uh, I think that's about it uh, for the day, uh, we should have a look at the last page, I do not think I have found anything important from here as well, so yeah, nothing important here. Uh, that's about mm -hmm. it for the day guys, uh, thank you for watching, have a nice day.